Hi everyone, Evgeny is back with you today and in this video we are taking a look at LM applications the way how uh, their architecture has been evolving from being a simple tool to fully complex autonomous CI agents. And if you take it as, uh, well, we have the architecture of our full autonomous CI agents and you just should take it for your new application. And if you think this is the right way, then you're completely wrong because picking the right architectural pattern is very dependent on the use case your application has, on the requirements uh, you have. So stick with me in this video till the end and you will learn first the way how all these architectural patterns were evolving from one to another what are the benefits and drawbacks of every single pattern and you have understanding uh, which one suits better for your application for the one you're currently working on or maybe thinking about all right let's dive in let's start at the simplest level the basic llm call and this is your most straightforward AI application. So one input goes in, the language model works its magic, and the result comes out. Nothing on top, no extras. And the structure here is super simple. You might add a bit of pre-processing before or some cleanup after, but the main show is the single LLM call. And this type of apps are perfect for focused tasks. So think of FIQ chatbots that just spill out answers to common questions or text summarizers that take a long article and boil it down into a few sentences. But there's a catch, it's limited. A single LLM call doesn't handle tools, it can't loop back to refine its output, it uh, definitely can't deal with complex workflows. It's like asking a friend one question at a time without letting them use Google for help. So, while this is a great starting point for simple applications, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Things get a lot more interesting as you add complexity on the top. And now let's look at something a bit more structured. An app that performs several tasks in a specific order. For example, you might want to break a complex problem into smaller, manageable steps like uh, processing input, transforming it, and then generating an output. So, when you organize these steps into a sequence, you get what's called a chain. A chain combines different steps, some of which might involve LLM calls and other that could handle external tasks like fetching data or formatting results. And these steps work together, passing information along the way. And the great thing about chains they're super reliable, so every time you run the app, it allows, it follows the exact same flow, step by step. So no surprises, no expected behavior, it's predictable and repeatable. And chains, they are especially popular in uh, retrieval argument generation workflows. For instance, you can generate a search query, then you retrieve relevant documents, then you format the results into a concise and polished summary. Chains are perfect when you want something dependable to handle multi-step tasks. Think of them as the assembly line of LLM apps. It's simple, it's effective, and it's reliable. And next, let's talk about routers. This is where things start to get a bit dynamic. So instead of knowing every step in advance, the system lets the LLM decide what to do next based on the input or the current context. For example, imagine a customer service application. A request comes in and the LLM evaluates the situation and it might decide to escalate the issue to a human person or resolve it autonomously or maybe request more data from an external source. And the flexibility is the router's superpower. It adapts to the situation on the fly, but as you can imagine, this also makes it a bit less predictable than a chain. There is an element of randomness which can be both a strange and a challenge. But in general, routers a big step forward, making LLM systems more autonomous. So instead of being locked into a predefined control flow, they can pick their own path, almost like they're planning their actions. 
So with routers, we move closer to the idea of LLM-defined control flows, where the application's behavior depends not just on the input, but on decisions made dynamically by the LLM. Now let's take things up a level with state machines. A state machine combines the dynamic decision-making of a router, so this one, with the ability to loop back and refine its output. It's like giving the system a chance to rethink and retry until it gets things the right way. So here's how it works. The LLM decides what to do next, just like a router. But now, instead of moving to the next step and being done, the system can loop back, adjust its state based on new information and keep iterating. This makes it perfect for handling more complex multi-step problems. For example, in an interactive tutorial system, the state machine could assess a student's response, loop back to explain a topic differently if needed, and then move forward when the student gets it. Or take an interactive research workflow, where the system refines its queries and output based on intermediate results. Of course, with this added flexibility comes added unpredictability. By combining a router with loop functionality, the system could theoretically invoke an unlimited number of LLM calls, making things harder to control. But when used right, the state machine brings a lot of power to the table for more specific applications. So, in general, state machines are all about taking dynamic control flow to the next level. They allow systems to think iteratively and adapt as they go. And now we have reached the final stage of autonomy, so welcome autonomous agents. And this is where things get truly dynamic. Autonomous agents remove the predefined constraints we have seen so far, letting the system define its own control flow and actions on the fly. So unlike state machines, where you still have some restriction rules in place, autonomous agents uh, operate without those limits. The system itself decides what steps to take next, how to take them and even which tools or memories. For example, think about a virtual assistant tasks with creating a detailed report. It could plan the structure of the report, it could collect relevant data from multiple sources, write up the content and refine it iteratively. Or imagine an agent planning an event, it might check for conflicts in the calendar, coordinate with multiple stakeholders, or manage logistics, and all without predefined instructions. So, autonomous agents are fully dynamic. They incorporate tools, memory, and planning to make decisions on the fly. But with this level of freedom comes a high level of unpredictability. You can't always predict how they'll approach a task, which is both exciting and a little nervous. While autonomous agents represent the peak of flexibility and autonomy, they also require careful design to keep them aligned with your goals. They're like giving AI the keys to your car and trusting it to figure out the destination. So we have just walked through the progression from the simplest to the most complex thing starting with basic LM calls and ending with fully autonomous agents. And sure, it might seem like autonomous agents are the best choice here. I mean, they're dynamic, flexible, and they sound super impressive, right? But here's the thing, they're not always the best fit. The truth is that the architecture you choose really depends on what you're trying to do. So let's break it down. First, you have to think about task complexity. For simple tasks, you probably don't need a fancy agent. A single LM call or reliable chain might be all you need. And next, here's predictability versus flexibility. So chains are great if you want something reliable and consistent. Same steps, same results every time. But if you need a system that adapts to different situations, something more dynamic like a router or an agent might be better. Then. There is a resource constraint. Let's be honest, agents aren't cheap. They use more computational power and need more fine tuning. So make sure you've got the resources if you are going that road. And finally, experimentation. So experimentation is a key. 
and there is no uh, one-size-fits-all solution. You'll need to try different architectures to figure out what works best for your use case. Think of it as a trade-off between uh, predictability and flexibility, and basic, uh, basic LLM calls and chains are predictable, while routers, state machines, and agents are progressively more dynamic and adaptable. And don't forget, uh, routers have a kind of a dull nature, so if the LLM's decisions are simple and fixed, it's closer to the pure LLM app. But when it starts making dynamic decisions, you're stepping into the agent's territory. But at the end of the day, there is no best architecture. It's all about what uh, fits your needs, whether it's simple of the shelf chain or highly autonomous agents. The key is understanding your tasks and experimenting to find the perfect match. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for sticking with me till the end of this video. And I hope you now have a better understanding of different architectural patterns. And now you know that uh, picking the most complex one, fully autonomous agent, is not the right way to go, right? You need always to judge your use case, your requirements, and all this stuff, because everything has drawbacks. And if you like this video, uh, if you have any thoughts, then please share it in the comments. If you like this video, please uh, give the like uh, so we know that the topic is interesting for you, so we can continue in this direction. And it was Evgeny. Thanks again and see you next time. Bye-bye.